Hello, everyone, and welcome to our final session for day two of the Big Blue Button 2022 World Conference. Um, this session is called Big Blue Button Mobile Client Roadmap. So the Big Blue Button project actually has two active streams of mobile development. The first project is called Big Blue Button Tablet, and it focuses on creating a mobile client that enables screen sharing for users of tablets, both iPads and Android tablets. And then the second project is called Big Blue Button Mobile, and it focuses on creating a mobile client using React Native components for most of the Big Blue Button interface. Um, and this is targeting mobile users who are using their phones, both Android and iOS operating systems. So this presentation will be given by three panelists. So we have Tiago Jacobs, who is an IT manager, software and developer, and has been the CEO of IMDT since 2004, as well as a core committer of Big Blue Button since 2011. Mario Gasparoni is an IT professional who's been working uh, with Linux systems and Unix systems for over 10 years, operating under many different hats. He also works as a full stack developer, a project lead developer, research technical manager, team leader, IT consultant, and open source systems developer. And finally, we have Lucas Zawaki, who is a programmer with in-depth experience with Linux and Unix environments and C and C++ programming. He's also developed a plethora of web applications using the Ruby on Rails framework, which is actually one of my personal framework, favorite frameworks. Um, so that's awesome. So um, just uh, a couple of housekeeping items. If you have questions or comments throughout the presentation, please put them in the chat. We're gonna get to them at the end. And then this recording will be made available um, next week. Um, so thank you three uh, for joining us today. And I'm really excited to see this presentation. Hello, everyone. Thank you, Jess. So let's start. <laughs> OK, as Jess mentioned, we have two projects, the Big Blue Button Tablet and the Big Blue Button Mobile. I'm going to present the Big Blue Button Tablet project. So everything started with the statement uh, from a user that uh, BBB in iOS does not support uh, screen share. And then we started to with the help of uh, other developers, other companies that was uh, collaborating, cooperating, we started to analyze how to figure, how to get rid of this limitation. So we started with a simple prototype that was uh, making a mobile app that captures the screen. And uh, we could achieve this goal using the replay kit framework that's basically a framework for from apple uh, that allow you to capture the frames by using a different application that is bundled together with the application and this uh, different application is the broadcast upload extension so basically we created this prototype we I'm, I'm saying we because we, we got the help of Milan, that is another developer. I think he's not here, but he was uh, actively working in this project, uh, sponsored by a, by another company that's that's using Big Blue Button also. And I was advising him on uh, how to, to achieve the, these steps. And uh, in our initial design, we re-implemented the communication uh, made by the application and the big blue button but after some uh, iterations we figured out that it would be complex to maintain because we would need to keep uh, compatibility between the the version of the application and the version of the big blue button so we uh, use it a different approach that i'm going to explain after we captured the screen we streamed the captured frames to a WebRTC peer. And this is done by using the uh, Google WebRTC library that we bundle together with the application. OK, after these two goals was achieved, we decided to open BigBlueButton, the regular BigBlueButton client. And this is the difference between what uh, Big Blue Button tablet does and what the mobile uh, project does because Big Blue Button tablet is basically running the Big Blue Button in a web view. It's it's kind of a browser that allows to capture the the screen. So 
we created an application that captured this the screen that uh, stream the captured frames to a WebRTC peer and then we open big blue button within this mobile application and uh, after doing it we had to let big blue button know it's running within this special app so big blue button can run a specific code and uh, call the WebRTC functions we created a shim, so it's, it's basically re-implementing the WebRTC methods, uh, passing these calls to the native to the mobile application. So it um, allows to to use this native code. So the capture of frames and the stream of the frames to WebRTC peer is not done by Big Blue Button that is running in WebView, but it's controlled from within Big Blue Button. And then we implemented this uh, messaging protocol that basically uh, allows Big Blue Button to say, user click it on uh, start a screen share, and then the application start sharing the screen. And when user clicks on the stop, it is stop sharing and so on. So this is the result. So basically, this is Big Blue Button running in a computer. And uh, here we see the iOS screen uh, shared within a big blue button session. So this is the, the first screenshot uh, when we got it working. And after we achieved this uh, goal that was uh, sharing the screen, we started to see what else we could do. So one thing was implementing the same thing for full audio. So now, when you join Big Blue Button using the Big Blue Button tablet application, the audio stream is uh, streamed <laughs> by the native, by the mobile application, and it allows uh, much better uh, background audio. So when you minimize the application and goes to another app, uh, the audio continues to flow, and uh, it, it's it's much better than when you use uh, Safari that you minimize and you get some problems with the audio. So, and then we ensured that it works with 2.4, 2.5, and 2.6. But here, uh, we need to, to say that 2.4 and 2.5, these PRs are not merged. So if you have a 2.4 server and you want to experiment it, you need to manually merge this PR and, and make a customized build of the Big Blue Button HTML5 component, uh, which is trivial. And uh, feel free to ask if you need any any support or any help by doing it. And now we are in the beta test step. And here, there is a QR code here. And uh, in this QR code, if you scan it using your uh, iOS device, you can download it and you can try. We have a server running it right now, so you can uh, use the the big blue button tablet application and you can uh, share your screen from this uh, application the source code is divided in two repositories the big blue button mod mobile tablet and big blue uh, big blue button tablet and big blue button tablet sdk the idea here is that the complex logic is uh, here in the sdk and the big blue button tablet is like a reference implementation so let's say you want to create an application that supports big blue button meetings within the application you can fork this project and then you will get a good uh, integration with big blue button that will support uh, all the big blue button features and also screen share and better full audio in your application so this is the idea of these uh, two repositories and uh, in terms of next steps we have uh, we need to finish the beta uh, uh, we hope to get uh, uh, downloads after this presentation and uh, maybe some uh, issue reports or things like that and then we can finish the beta publish in app store and after it's published in app store we're going to do the same for android uh, about the technologies, we are using React Native, but most of the code is uh, Swift. So 
we're going to use the same repository for both uh, projects, for iOS and Android, but of course we have uh, different uh, native codes for achieving these goals. When is beta possible on Android? I'm going to reply in a, in a second. Uh, I think we are in the final slides, then I, I go back to this. Okay. So BBB iOS does not support screen share. Boom, <laughs> now it supports. So it's a, it's a good achievement that we got with this project. And now I'm going to be happy to answer any questions. About the beta for Android, we didn't start it yet. So there is a learning curve, something like that. But I don't know, I think something like six months, we're going to have the beta, but it can be much sooner or a little bit later. Uh, there is a learning curve. Uh, we're going to do the same things, the same steps in Android. So maybe some surprises can appear, uh, but six months is a, is a, good, uh, a good idea. Okay. For the big blue button tablet, uh, this is what I had to present. And uh, if no other questions, I'm going to, to move to Mario and Lucas. Thanks, Tiago. Uh, we can get back to the questions to big blue button tab at the end. Um, okay, I have the presenter now. So, hi guys, uh, I'm Mario from MCONF, Lucas also from MCONF. We are going to speak about a different uh, project, what we call Big Blue Button Mobile. Uh, the main difference is that it is focused on the user experience, uh, and that's what's, what we are working right now. Uh, okay, let's start. Here, I'm going, I'm going to describe the process we adopted to start developing this uh, new application we the, the develop the, the the coding development itself started a couple of weeks ago and but before that we have lots of you know designing thinking yeah, getting user requirements and uh, getting user users feedback and stuff like that so the first phase is the creative process i'm going to show the slide and the first phase of our uh, creative process is the feedback analysis. We basically took a look in our uh, applications, mobile applications that exist in, in, the, in the current, you know, iOS, Android devices. Not all, but the most, uh, the most famous we've, we found. There are others that we found that we don't list here. And the idea is to see what are the strengths and the weaknesses of each so, for example, uh, we have Google Meet, and the, the first strength we found is the ease of use. Uh, this is based on real users' feedback from the uh, app stores, and a weakness is a corporate focus. Uh, while whereby, for example, has as a strength, it users can join without having to log in, which I personally like it. And weakness is no virtual background, for example. So uh, the idea of this phase is to take a, a, a global view of all the implementations and see uh, if what we are thinking is not too far from what the current players are, play, players are doing. Uh, okay. After this, we started to uh, we started all our uh, our user journey, and this in this phase we basically got uh, users, not only developers, to start listing actions and tasks to... Um, <clears throat> uh, sorry, I was reading the chat. Okay, I'll get back to that later. Uh, real users to test, uh, to list, and also um, describe some actions. For example, uh, if, I have, if I'm using a mobile application, what do I expect? Well, I expect to join a room, activate audio, other stuff, but that's in a very, uh, not in a very deep uh, level of, of uh, you know, 
the description. So basically what we did is to take notes from other user, other teams and, and other, including all the other institutions. And from this, we described all this journey. So for example, here we have these notes and if users want to, for example, join the room, what are the backstage action involved? And here we listed, okay, we basically we need to do some out in the server and stuff like that. Uh, okay, this user journey helped us to go to uh, the jobs to be done. And this is jobs to be done. We have lots of jobs to be done here and questions about this. Uh, I'm gonna talk about two. Uh, the first job, job to be done with detected is to log in easily and securely. And, and the second one is inviting people. And for each job, we start to we started to make questions about okay, why is logging security important? Why is, why is logging security important? Why should I log in? How to make logging easy? And all this data we use it to produce our user requirements for our uh, prototype. So okay, now we have the prototype and now we have the user requirements and what we are going to do, let's do the prototype. So the next slide, we, we started to get all this information into real users. So uh, until this phase, we were basically talking internally and with some other institutions with the BBB team. And now we are going to test this with real, real users. So this, what we first did is the prototyping. And the first prototype is this left one. We use a paper and pencil. And we have, after this one, we went to the second low fidelity prototype. It's a grayscale, the second one here, if you see my cursor. And then we uh, did our third prototype, which is the Figma prototype. Uh, Figma is a framework for designing and we developed uh, this prototype based on our user requirements. You see this, uh, you see cameras, you see presentations, you see some buttons. We'll get back to this later. And then after prototype this, we went to our usability test. This is a real picture from one event that we participated. And these are users uh, filling the server that we proposed. We also will get back to this later. So, okay, this is our prototype. This is our first prototype. Uh, in the first screen, you have the section that is some sort of home sec section. So after logging in, you get into this screen, you have the link for your room. Sorry, this is in Portuguese. We are, uh, we are doing this for this specific event. So we kept, we got the uh, screenshots in Portuguese. So this is the link for uh, event. You can copy it, we can share this using WhatsApp, email, stuff like that. Uh, you also have the name of your room and you can toggle if your room will be private or not, uh, if users need moderator's approval. And then you can start your meeting. And after starting, you will uh, be redirected to one of these uh, screens. So let's get the first screen. You have this video chat layout where you have uh, one user focus it, or others with webcams, you have the actions bar, you have chat, you have microphone muted, uh, turn on, turn off a audio, uh, turn on, turn off webcam and raise your hand. And the other uh, section we have, one another important section we have is this uh, focus it on layout uh, meeting. So that, that's basically what we are doing right here, right now. We have audio webcams and we have presentation and we are focused on presentation. So yeah, okay, this is the first prototype. This is the one that we brought to the users to test. And here's our usability test. We went to this event called uh, Campus Party and we applied this uh, prototype. Users can download it, open in the Android iOS devices. And they started to test some tasks that we listed and that we found important. And also they were ensure some uh, uh, this survey that we created. So what are the tasks the user the users were doing here? Uh, the first task is open app and login. Second one, activate the microphone, ask the teacher a question, use the chat, focus on presentation, then on focus and raise hand. 
And for each task, we asked the user how was the experience from one to five, and we got all this uh, all all this survey. And at final, we had a hundred users uh, answer the the survey, and we also uh, most of the users uh, were from, uh, seventeen to thirty four years old and focused on college students. This is a local news about this event. This is a huge event with thousands of, of users here, here in Brazil. And most of the users are students. So this is basically focused in online teaching. OK. Here we are going to user feedbacks. Uh, and you can notice. OK, so. Basically, this is the, the survey, it's in Portuguese, that the users had to answer. But based on this survey, our feedback uh, and support teams got um, a lot of data, a lot of metrics and stuff that we are going to take into account when developing this uh, mobile client. And can I get presenter? Okay. And um, so, so just to list a few insights that we we got, uh, lots of users talked about uh, it not being so intuitive to have to click around to to do lots of things. Users wanted to pinch; they wanted the touch movements, and that's uh, exactly what we we want to focus when thinking about a mobile client. We want it to feel like a mobile app. We want it to be mobile first. We don't want it to just be a copy, like an exact copy of what we already have. Uh, users, um, uh, they talked a lot about uh, some buttons were not intuitively placed. And so we have lots of data about this. We're thinking about it. And also we had some problems with uh, the Figma prototype because it's after all it's just like a series of screens linked by button presses it uh, it wasn't as as good as if we already had an application but that was the limitation of the test we were doing and so now i'll briefly touch on the technical aspects of this new client and so here we we have a a table that we worked on with Fred and with Tiago and other members of uh, the Big Blue Button team. And uh, today we we don't have any released uh, uh, mobile clients. So today we have this first line, which is the the web client running inside the, of a mobile browser. And this works, but uh, our objectives and Tiago's objectives, which is the, the Tiago is the second uh, row and we are the, the third row. Our objective is to uh, do better in most, most of these categories. So we want to have it optimized for a mobile um, device so that it shouldn't use so much uh, battery power. We want to have uh, audio working on background. We want better audio quality for mobile. We, we want it to support uh, natively uh, both iOS and Android. And uh, also we want to have it, um, we want to have it as an embeddable project that you could include as part of another app that uses uh, web conferencing. I'm going to talk a little more about this in the next slides. And uh, so we have lots of differences. The, the, this table is here. You can look at, at it at your own time. But uh, our time frame is a little, a little more in the future uh, than uh, Tiago's, uh, and so our is for the midterm. We, we're aiming at twenty twenty three to have the first um, functional prototypes. Uh, but yeah, so the the difference, if I if I could. Um, uh, explain it uh, briefly is we want to have this built from the ground up with native components. So we're, we're using React Native, which is actually the same uh, framework that um, is being used in the Big Blue Button tablet. But we are going to re-implement most of the HTML5 client as native components. So here we have um, 
Uh, this this is a real project running on the an Android emulator. These are real components. It's just all fake data. It's not really as interactive as the client, but this is like a little um, uh, taste of what we want to do. So it, it will be mostly the same code for the Android and iOS clients. Uh, currently, React Native can't uh, perfectly mimic the same application Android and iOS, but we have to have a few adjustments per code base. <clears throat> and for now, uh, we are going to tap into Meteor's socket, which is the, the, framework, the server framework we're using for the HTML5, and we'll consume the data as if we were um, an HTML5 uh, user. But in the future, we will probably have a dedicated uh, data protocol for this. And uh, for the deliverables, we're aiming to have uh, two, uh, two, two different um, deliverables. Yeah. <clears throat> One of them will be the what we, we're calling the uh, mobile SDK which will be one component or maybe a series of uh, components, React Native components that can be included as part of your application. And so it, uh, you, you just include the components uh, together with a uh, uh, meeting join URL and maybe some configurable aspects of your, of your conference. Could be aesthetic aspects, could be uh, server configurations. And then uh, it will it will render as a, the big blue button meeting. It will do all the, the connections for you. And uh, it, this will come together with a sample application, which is just like a logging screen or something. Give me, it will ask for a join URL and we'll put you inside the meeting. But the idea is that uh, this could be, as we said, integrated into other uh, applications. So, if uh, an institution wants to do their own white label big blue button and use uh, use this as a component, they could. Or we would have um, a mobile green light experience where the, we would just have all the the great functionalities that we have today on green light in as a mobile app that will then uh, render the the meetings with this. A mobile component. Yeah, but <laughs> that's mostly it. Uh, th thank you guys for joining, for listening. And now we're all, we're open for all kinds of questions. I'll read the chat. I wasn't paying attention on the chat. Yeah, about the, uh, I'm going to start by this last one. Uh, I would like to mention, uh, before is that this new comp new this new big blue button mobile application will be focused on yeah optimizations using native components and also user ex user experience so yeah we do expect uh, a, a better uh, better handling the resources from the device and that's what we expect Yeah, about the performance, um, the the plan is to have uh, better performance. This this is uh, if if it wasn't if it if it wasn't for the performance and all the the things I was talking about, it it wouldn't even uh, we wouldn't even be doing this. It's a uh, um, it's a nice uh, idea to release the the mobile app as like a Windows application or something, but we don't have plans for that. But it will be open source, so. Uh, I, I guess someone could contribute this. Uh, we're open to, to discussing this. Yes, and also Big Blue Button, uh, mobile, uh, Big Blue Button Web is always looking uh, in ways to reproducing issues related to performance. So if any of you get some kind of uh, performance issue that we can uh, reproduce, please post on the mailing list, open an issue, and we're going to investigate. Of course, the Big Blue Button mobile project is, uh, as it's going to be a mobile first implementation, it's, it's going to run much faster, but also we're interested in always improving the web version. So feel free to report. It's very important for our entire team to 
improve the performance. Uh, another thing, Christian asked if there is a, a link. Uh, there is, Christian. Please uh, check the repository maybe uh, next week. I'm going to improve the readme and add these details. It's missing there. So I already added a to-do in my list. So next week, uh, join the, the repository link and in the readme, I will show how to deep link with the application. About uh, how I went back a, a little bit further on chat, uh, Daniel asks, uh, is talking about the, the really aggressive way that Android uh, treats audio. This is something we, we want to address. Um, currently using, at least on my Android device, using audio is uh, really flaky. Sometimes the if I minimize the application, I'll just lose the tab altogether, get uh, disconnected from audio. I can't uh, put the phone, uh, turn off my screen. So th this kind of things we want to, to think first about the audio performance, about the audio usability. That's exactly what we have in mind. And uh, to Leon, uh, the BBB app, uh, we, uh, I took a really deep look on the BBB app. It's it's a really cool piece of code. Uh, unfortunately, it's a little uh, outdated with uh, our code base, but uh, it's uh, I really based some ideas on the code. It's it's a really nice piece of work by the community. Yeah, bef before deciding to use React Native, we took a deep look into this BBB Flutter app. It was developed by a, developed by a German university, right? So we then, uh, after some reasons, we decided to uh, to move on into uh, React Native. But yeah, as Lucas mentioned, that has some really nice code and also some good ideas, especially when dealing with meteor data and stuff like that. We are going to do the same in this first version. Samuel has some, uh, some uh, really interesting question, which is how will we handle different server and uh, BBB app versions. This is really hard. We're still thinking about how we can do this, but it will probably be close to how BBB does this, which is we'll have to uh, assume we are at least uh, uh, at, we, we will have some to need uh, to test the compatibility. Like you, you can't be on a super updated version using a super old client. It, there's there's kind of no no magic here, but we'll try to to support as many configurations as we can. But it's uh, really really hard, and it's not uh, unique to the mobile client. We have this problem everywhere on the BBB code. Thank you all for such a fantastic presentation. Um, I see some people are still typing and we do have time for a few more questions. Um, uh, but before we wrap up, I just wanted to thank you guys again for this awesome presentation and just let everyone know that um, tomorrow uh, we are continuing the Big Blue Button uh, 2022 World Conference and tomorrow is focused on administrators. So today we focus on developers, tomorrow we're focusing on administrators. And so there's some like great presentations coming up about um, B3 scale, big blue button servers, um, reducing your hosting bill, some really cool sessions um, that I think a lot of people will be pretty interested in. And um, several of the people who have been commenting and asking questions in the chat will also be presenting tomorrow. So that's a really awesome little connection to the community. So thank you to everyone. Recordings will be going out and we're gonna leave the session open for a little bit more just so you know, Lucas and Mario and Tiago can continue to answer your questions for a little bit longer. Thanks, Jess. Thanks, guys. Uh, we'll be here. Just you can just ask questions. <laughs>